All right, class, in this video, we're going to be taking a closer look at the abdominal cavity, particularly a quick overview and then looking mostly at the digestive tract. So once we get into this view and we've removed the, um, the greater omentum, we can see all of the abdominal contents. And what you're seeing here mostly is the stomach, the spleen, um, the small intestine, and a little bit of the liver. And I'll go through some of those um, accessory organs in another video. But just to start off with, you see that the torso is divided um, <clears throat> into the abdominal cavity here, and just above that is the thoracic cavity. Um, and it's divided by the diaphragm. And I've cut just a little bit of it right there. This is a fairly thin muscle that we'll see once we get a little further up into the thoracic cavity. Um, but the digestive tract obviously starts with the mouth. And it's going to, once the food is swallowed, it's going to uh, work its way down through the esophagus and into the stomach. Now, the esophagus is somewhat difficult to see because it's fairly deep and it meets the stomach right, um, right after it comes through the diaphragm and the liver does sort of sit in our way there also. So finding the esophagus is, is somewhat hard once, unless we get up into the uh, thoracic cavity. So identifying it here, we'll, um, we'll forgo that for now. So the stomach, as, uh, as we've discovered, or as we looked at in the digestive uh, unit, is there basically to uh, mechanically and chemically digest food. And we have a couple of parts. We have, it's, it's J-shaped, so if you refer to your um, your reference sheet that's been provided, um, or if you find any picture of it online, you'll see that it is J-shaped. Um, and up at the top, it actually extends just a little bit above the, um, above the, uh, the entrance of, or the opening for the esophagus. This part, this upper part, is called the fundus. Okay? Then we get into the body, which is the main portion of the stomach. Um, and as you work through your lab, you're going to um, actually cut into that. I'm not going to do that today. This one actually feels quite empty, um, but what you'll see when you get inside is probably some partially undigested food um, and some folds that are also known as uh, rugae, and that helps to increase the surface area of the stomach. As we continue down toward the bottom of the stomach, all right, it starts to narrow. And this is called the pyloric region. And as it narrows, you can see it's about that far. As we get down to the end of the stomach, there's actually a sphincter muscle. And this is the, the, the pyloric sphincter. You can see it here. Um, it narrows just slightly. There's usually some fat accumulation to it. Not sure how good of a view you're going to see in this uh, from the camera angle. Um, but you'll see that it does narrow, um, and once you get into your specimen, it's a little easier to identify. That closes to keep um, the contents of the stomach there for digestion until it's ready to move on. Then we progress into the small intestine, and the small intestine has three parts. The first part, just after the pyloric sphincter, is the section called the duodenum, and this is actually uh, sits. Uh, very deep in the abdominal cavity, and you have to get all of the rest of the um, contents out of the way. So if I do that, you'll see it comes down. So the stomach is here, pyloric sphincter, and it, it, it angles down and it comes down toward the, the lower half of the body. All right, and the duodenum actually is a fairly short section. It's only a, a couple of inches, if that. And once, it's, once it gets down to the bottom and curves back up, it now then becomes the jejunum. All right. The jejunum is the section, second part, and it is a lot of what you see here. And the food is going to uh, work through the, uh, through the, the jejunum um, and eventually make its way to the ileum. Now, the, the specific part where, where it changes is not really identifiable. So it's easy to find the beginning of the jejunum, beginning of the jejunum from where the duodenum uh, curves up, and then, the, then to find the end of the ileum. 
So what we would do there is then find the large intestine. And the large intestine actually sits right on top of the duodenum. And you can tell that it's the large intestine because it is just that. It is large. Um, and you can see where the smaller portion of the small intestine enters into the um, into the large intestine. So, and this is actually on this specimen a little easier to see from the backside. So I'm going to flip it over. It depends on the specimen. You'll see right here. This is the ilium, and it then goes into the um, into the ascending colon, which is part of the large intestine. You also see where that enters, there's actually a little part that hangs down here, and this is the cecum. Okay. One more quick note on the small intestine. You'll see that throughout it's, it doesn't really unravel well because there's a membrane that holds it together. You can see here uh, that I'm running my finger on the underside of it. This is what's known as the mesentery. And this sort of holds everything together. It also has some, you see some blood, uh, blood vessels that are there to supply blood flow to the uh, intestines and are also there for absorption of nutrients. So after that snakes through, we then enter into the large intestine. The large intestine has three sections. So we have the ascending colon, and this part is actually going to come up. We have the transverse colon that is going to go across. In this particular specimen, it's not very long. Um, it looks like it just sort of curves over. Some of them you'll see it come up, go across, and then down. But this one, the transverse colon, is fairly short. All right. So ascending colon, transverse colon, then, when we work over to the other side, you'll see the descending colon. And the descending colon is going to take that, uh, uh, what's, what waste product is left, and go on down to the rectum and anus um, for, it be, for it to be removed. So, and that is your digestive tract. So, just a quick review. Stomach, up top, we have the fundus, the body, the pyloric region. And we have the pyloric sphincter. We have the small intestine. Three components of that are the duodenum. It comes down. Once it angles up, it is going to be the jejunum. And then eventually it will turn into the ilium. The ilium then works its way into the colon, the large intestine. You have the ascending colon transverse colon, and then as it works its way around, the descending colon.